On today's show, Microsoft unveils the most expensive tablet computer in the world. While Sony announces the thinnest tablet. And Ghalib takes the trike out for a spin. And you definitely don't want to miss that. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Insight. We have to start though this week with the launch of the most expensive tablet computer in the world. Microsoft is getting back into the game with its pro version of the Surface tablet. With a price tag of 630 British pounds, it's 108 pounds more expensive than the top range Apple iPad, but it may be worth it. Unlike the Surface tablet launched in October, the Surface Windows 8 Pro is powered by an Intel Core i5 processor and can use full versions of Windows 8. That means that you can use programs like Word and even Photoshop, which with the added Surface Pen provides endless opportunities and could even be a full laptop replacement. But Kaleem, there is one major drawback. The thing is, the Surface Pro still lacks mobile network connectivity, which means you'll have to be within range of a Wi-Fi network to access the internet. That's a big disadvantage to compared to things like the iPad, which you can take wherever you want to. Right, it? that does have 3G and 4G connectivity. And you're paying more money. Exactly, but having said that, like they say, they're trying to market it as a laptop replacement and the portability of it could be the main feature. You never know, a new version might come out soon. Hot on the heels of that launch comes Sony's unveiling of what it says is the thinnest tablet, the Android-powered Xperia Z. It is 0.01 inches thinner than the in mini iPad, but features a bigger 10.1 inch screen. The tablet is actually designed to work with Sony's new Xperia Z smartphone, which you'll remember was launched at the Consumer Electronics Show in January. The water-resistant devices allow photos and other data to be transferred using one-touch sharing, which is activated by waving the machines close to each other to activate their near-field communications chips. We will look forward to more details and possibly even the launch of the Xperia tablet at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona later this month. Samsung has already said it will show a new 8-inch version of its Galaxy Note at that time. Continuing the rollout of gadgets at a fast pace, Samsung has also introduced its Galaxy Camera. An Android-based device, the Galaxy Camera gives an idea of where the future is heading for photography. The gadget allows users to take pictures and upload them to all sorts of social media. It also enables someone to check their emails, manage a calendar, browse the internet and actually play games. While Samsung and other major companies such as Canon, Nikon, Sony and Lytro are still experimenting with the right mix of touchscreen and applications to improve the camera, the Galaxy camera is definitely a step in the right direction. Lenovo has decided to join the legion of manufacturers making Chromebooks with its own offering, the Lenovo ThinkPad X131e Chromebook, a first for the company. The Chromebook is designed primarily for school use with Google Apps for Education. It includes the latest generation Intel processor along with 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, several USB ports and 6.5 hours of battery life. Lenovo has also included a few unique features on its version of the Chromebook, such as the company's signature red trackpad button, rubberized bumper coating on the back of the monitor, and making it more sturdy with corners, hinges and hinge brackets having been reinforced. Sounds strong enough to uh, throw it a ball. <laughs> I'll let you try that one out and see how it really works. Well, with so many products being rolled out on a regular basis and so many companies jumping into the smartphone and tablet market, the next bit of news shouldn't be much of a surprise. Apple faced a rough start to the year with the world's largest tech company reporting a third straight quarter of weaker than expected revenues. Apple's stocks dipped around the world, despite the company's record revenues of 54.5 billion US dollars in the past three months. 
Despite the record revenues, though, some experts are questioning Apple's capacity for ever-continuing growth, saying that the company doesn't seem to have new products in sight. Others say it's difficult for average consumers to keep up with latest products ranges and appear content keep to keep older handsets or tablets rather than splurging out on newer models. So that's the latest in product launches. Let's switch gears a bit. So all of you had the chance to leave MTA and go and test out the trike. That's right. Uh, today we went and tried out the trike, which is a brand new three-wheel vehicle, and it's actually battery-powered. It's a bit like a scooter, but it has the extra advantage of being quite uh, versatile. You can fold it up and take it with you, and it runs on a battery that can last for up to 20 miles. Let's have a look. These are the sights and sounds of a busy metropolis. Scenes replicated around the world. Traffic, noise, pollution. The hallmarks of the 21st century where transportation is vital for everyday life. And then there is this. Enter the trike. The 21st century solution to getting around green style. It's not a bicycle and it's not a Segway either. Welcome to the latest craze in personal transportation. This is the trike. And as you can see, it's a battery operated three wheel vehicle and it's perfect for getting around busy cities just like London. It may look like a bizarre version of your kid's scooter, but make no mistake, this is a grown up toy fit for a variety of purposes. In fact, developers are so confident in their product that they are touting it as a stable transportation choice that can eliminate heavier polluting vehicles from roads. Lofty claims that just may be achievable. So we've been trying out the trike today and it's the latest thing in personal transportation. Now to help talk about the product even more, we're joined by Jad, who is an expert on the trike and uh, he should be around here somewhere. There he is, Jad. Welcome to the show, thanks for joining thanks for us. Hi. So, can you just explain to us what the trike is and, and how does it work? What's the technology behind it? Uh, trike, the unique about trike, it has a cambering system here that allows you to lean when you when you lean. The three wheels remain yeah. on the ground, so this will give you the skiing motions. While you're using the trike, you can you can propel it, and you can no matter how you lean, three wheel stays on the ground, and it will give you skiing motions. And this also, you can use it manually without battery by leaning on it and preparing. So it uses your actual motion to, to power it exactly. if you don't have the battery? Exactly. Okay. So, I mean, this has been marketed as, as very green technology. Is, Do you yeah. think it has a future because of that? Definitely. This is the future. It's green. It has a lithium battery that lasts you 20 miles on single charge. Uh, it's. Uh, the way it goes, the way it moves, quiet, silent, uh, no pollution for the environment, it's, this is the future. This is the future, okay. So on my one here, I've got these optional lights as well. Do these yeah. come with it as standard? Yeah, it's optional, you can put any, any, as much lights as you want here in the back. On, you can wear a helmet as well, yep. put lights on the helmet for more safety. Uh, helmet is compulsory, it's not you have to wear a helmet, it's like a bike. Okay. When you ride a bike, you can either wear a helmet or not wear a okay. helmet. So tell us about the, the brakes on this, what brakes do you the use? The brakes, it has disc pads and it has a proper... This is the disc pad here, yeah. it has a proper uh, brake pads as well. Yeah. Which is, they last you for... I've been using one of these trikes for three years, I've never changed the brakes yet. Okay. Uh, so, which is give you, the when you're braking motions, it will stop immediately. And both brakes are in the back wheels, okay. which is, so where is your weight? Your weight is in the back. When you brake, you brake on your weight. So it doesn't skid. It will help to stop much faster than a bicycle or uh, a different uh, okay. scooter. Well, we're, I mean, we're here in central London and uh, getting around in London is very difficult. So what's the best thing about this for someone who works in a, in a big city? Personally, I use it all the time in London. I go around, I use it on the bicycle lane. Uh, just cruise around. Uh, it's very safe. The beauty about it is you're you're high up. When you're when you're high up, you can see you have a clear view. You know, when when you're on a bike, you're you're going down. But yep. on the trike, you have a better view. 
you can see clearly uh, any risk, any accident could happen. God forbid, you're always safe. You and always uh, once you've reached your destination, what do you do then? Do you have to lock it up? Or does it fold? Or? Once you reach your destination, you can either lock it up or you can fold it. It's so easy to fold, like that. You can either well, roll it behind you. And how much does it weigh once it's folded? 17 kg. 17 kg. You can lift it more than. There you go. Yeah. It's that light. So this really is the future of uh, modern transportation. It is. And to unfold it, so. Tell me a little bit more about the, the battery that you use. How do you charge this? The battery, it's a lithium Panasonic battery. It's swappable. You can have two batteries, 36 volt. You can take it, put another one once you run out. If you, do, if you don't want to use it manually, because if you run out from battery, yeah. you can always use it manually by propelling it and moving, moving it around. Okay. Uh, the battery, and, and how do you charge this? It says charge it from here. It's like a laptop charger. So you can just, charge it at home? Yeah, just at home, normal, anywhere you go, you time. go to the office, just take it out, plug it in. A couple of hours, you'll be ready to go That's another good. 20 miles. And what's the response been to this, to this technology? Have people really uh, looked forward to try it out? Is it Absolutely, it's uh, everywhere I go, people are like, wow, what's that? What's, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, uh, it's a new invention. It's, uh, uh, it is the future. It's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun, uh, definitely. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you right. tried it yourself, you know. You, you, it's like... And for a real beginner, I mean, I got used to it in two you, minutes. You don't, you, know. you don't need to learn. You can, anyone can just jump on it now and, and cruise. Okay. Jad, thank mm -hmm. you very much for Good showing us the you, trike. Right? Appreciate you. your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, this is the trike. And uh, it's the latest craze, especially in America. And the one that was most popular there is without the battery. And to power that, you have to basically move around like this in a slalom motion, which uh, basically the manufacturers say is similar to skiing on the road. It's the closer you can get to skiing. But obviously, yeah, I've got the battery powered. I'm a bit lazy. So we're testing that out. And it's pretty fast. The top speed on these trikes is 15 miles an hour. And uh, the battery that I have can last for up to 20 miles on one charge. It's really easy to use, it's very light, easy to manoeuvre, very fun. I've got one uh, throttle control over here. I've got brakes like a normal bike as well. And it's starting to rain now, so I'm going to head off back home. See you guys later. So Galib, having tried it out, tell me honestly, do you think you would ever get one for yourself? Well, the thing is the price. I mean, at the moment, they're retailing in the UK for £1,600, which is quite pricey. Now, having said that, you can get ones without battery powered, which are a lot cheaper. Um, but the main ones that they're marketing here in the UK come with battery powered. And that has to be the biggest factor. But having said that, it was a lot of fun. I'm not sure if I would actually buy one myself, but for people living in the city, congested areas, it's a great way to get around town. But can you honestly see the whole of London being filled with commuters carrying these strange looking objects onto the underground and then taking it out onto the street? Well, the, the thing is at the moment, there's two million people who commute to work by bike in London. Now out of that, even if 10 or you know, 50,000 were to get one of these, you, know, you might see it more and more every day. But the trend now is for losing calories and all this fitness. What kind of fitness benefits are there in this? Well, obviously this battery powered one, you're not gonna get much fitness benefit out of it. But like I said, they do also do one without the battery powered where you actually have to put you know, your, your full body into it to almost you know, drive it like a slalom motion. Imagine if you're skiing along the road, that sort of motion, and that can actually propel you. So that's one of the benefits with this as well, because viewers at home would know about the Segway, which is a two-wheeled vehicle. But the thing is with that, if the battery runs out, you're stuck. With this, even if the battery does run out, you can push it yourself. But that wasn't a major revolution anyway, was it? Well, it was, especially in the United States, that really did take off. And the trike is really popular in the US at the moment. Obviously, now they're trying to market it here in the UK, so we'll see how they find it. Let's see if it changes things here. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, if you get a chance to try it out, definitely. So, in other science news now, we're drinking water being one of the most basic things that is at times very difficult to obtain in developing countries. A collaboration between GE engineers and WaterStep 
aims to solve that problem inexpensively. Working to build a portable water treatment device which could treat large quantities of water and be able to withstand rough use while being made of regular materials, GE engineers devised a method using the basic process of electrolysis using ordinary table salt and electricity from a car battery to make chlorine gas in order to disinfect water. They've called it the Waterstep M100 Chlorinator, quite a nice name don't you think? which has the capacity to produce enough chlorine gas to disinfect 38,000 litres of water every day, enough for almost 10,000 people. It's already being used in Kitali in Kenya. These kind of problems don't see that you don't see them that much in the media, but these problems are big. They're huge issues for people all around the world, and this could be such a big thing in terms of saving lives in the third world. It's the best way of using technology for the benefit of the and human race. And such a simple process. It's funny how it, it never came to someone's mind before. That's right. It's one of those things we take for granted, isn't it? Definitely clean drinking water. But you know, out there in these developing countries, people are using this technology to better people's well, lives. Let's hope millions of people can benefit from this. Chemical engineers from Hong Kong are also tackling the water problem. They have recently synthesized a polymer coating which allows cotton to become extremely absorbent. They are proposing that a coating could be used to create a desert fog water collecting system or in clothes used by athletes to keep them dry. The researchers from Hong Kong Polytechnic University and Eindhoven's University of Technology made the coating after taking inspiration from the Namib beetle. The beetle survives in the southwest African desert where just 1.3 centimeters of rain falls on average each year. Through use of humid ocean fog, the beetle aims its wings at the incoming breeze and as it hits its hard shells, droplets condense. These droplets are then collected as they run down to its back, straight into its mouth. The researchers believe that this method could be used to collect water in mountainous or desert regions where mists and fog sweep in and are a source of rare moisture since the method produces pure water and can be repeated with the same results but there may be a slight problem due to the dependence of heat. Now as we know technology is not all about fun and games. In fact there are some amazing breakthroughs in medical technology. Now IBM, for example, has just unveiled a high-tech gel that can destroy hospital superbugs. The new antimicrobial hydrogel is being dubbed a replacement for new antibiotics. In fact, antibiotics cannot penetrate bacteria like the gel can. The gel can be used for creams, coating for medical instruments and injections into infectious wounds. When the gel is applied to contaminated surfaces, its positive charge attracts all negatively charged microbial membranes and then kills the bacteria by membrane disruption. This is a pretty major breakthrough. Given that here, just in the UK, 43,000 people contracted a hospital infection last year, with health services paying out £20 million pounds in compensation. It's also pretty pertinent given that the health officials are also warning that the world faces a massive threat from resistant superbugs that are more serious than global warming. Kaleem, you work in the medical profession. Do you think this is a real breakthrough? We have to see. I mean, bugs are absolutely brilliant at mutating and if this does stop them for a short period, there may be more mutations in the world of bugs to actually then become resistant to this technology. So we can try it out and see, but bugs are fantastic at mutating and changing their own genes to actually then make other superbugs. And then we have to have more technologies to overcome those. That's right, it's a constant struggle. The interesting thing here is that this was actually uh, unveiled by IBM, who obviously make computers. So it's interesting to see that their research is actually going into the world of uh, medical technology as well and they've been able to come up with this fantastic gel. A man who had his hand ripped off in a jet ski accident became the first in the UK to have a pioneering bionic limb fitted. The Michelangelo hand is a unique prosthetic hand that has electronic fingers and a thumb. This means that the wearer can move all five fingers using the muscles in his arm. The 47,000 US dollar device has electrodes which sense movements in the muscle and in turn trigger signals that are then sent to the hand. Unlike other prosthetics readily available, this hand can carry out detailed work and pick up small items. 
this could change the world for people after wars and situations like that, after a freak accident. Yeah, that's right. These bionic limbs, are, you're seeing more and more of them and they're getting more and more advanced. Um, you know, who knows, we might be getting to this cyborg age where you've got half man, half machine. You hear about it all in sci-fi films and now it's becoming a reality. But obviously for this gentleman involved, you know, it's something that's really life-changing for him. Yeah. Now, a Dutch architect is planning to construct the world's first house using the world's largest 3D printer. The house will be strip-shaped, but a solid without any visible seams. The 3D printer was designed by an Italian roboticist and can print objects as large as 6 meters by 9 meters using a mix of grinded down rocks and sand held together with a liquid binding agent. And finally, in space news, it seems that the surface of Saturn's largest moon, Titan, has been going through some changes, erasing thousands of craters that used to dot its surface and were used to determine the moon's age. Researchers at NASA made the discovery after observing data from the Cassini spacecraft, which was sent to explore the region surrounding Saturn in 2004. According to NASA's research, the craters on Titan's surface are slowly being filled with a hydrocarbon sand coming from some kind of methane source. The team of researchers made the discovery after comparing craters on Titan with those of Ganymede, which is Jupiter's moon. Since the two have an ice crust, which should have meant that they shared similar crater shapes. It was observed that Titan has craters that are hundreds of meters shallower than those on Ganymede, which means some process on the moon is filling the craters, such as wind-blown sand. That's all the time that we have for on this episode of Insight. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, inshallah, with more technology news and reviews. We hope you are enjoying Insight. We want to hear what you think about the stories and products we've talked about today. Also tell us what you would like to see on this program. You can send us your comments and any suggestions to insight at mta.tv and we'll share them on our next show. Thanks for joining us and assalamu alaikum.